Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Christian Taylor Wilkinson, who is uh, CEO at Altona, Altona Energy, apparently. Uh, how are you today, Christian? How are you? I'm I'm doing fine. Right, Altona, a, a company with a uh, with certainly a name a name to remember. Let's say for some of us uh, who follow small caps. So what's going on at the moment? Okay, so we've um, we spent the last eighteen months um, looking at a, a different route for the company. Um, it was involved in coal mining in Australia, which which um, didn't take off, uh, wrong licenses, not enough cash, etc. Um, so we stripped the company out, we removed costs, we're running sort of a bare minimum, um, but at the same time we're now looking to rebuild the board. Um, and what we thought we needed was something that um, we could start adding shareholder value to quickly, which is one thing that's, that's basically been missing from Altona for the last uh, five years. Um, so the rare earth element market seemed to be a popular uh, choice um, and we've employed a geologist who's based in Kenya, a lovely French guy who's uh, fantastic and a metallurgist who lives in Australia. Uh, with their advice we've been looking for assets to start negotiations with and we've uh, so far uh, acquired two um, mining projects, both of which have had exploration work done in the past. And we're looking at a third asset now in Kenya, hopefully we'll be able to sign a heads of agreement with next week. Um, and this is where Altona takes a majority stake. Um, so we cover the costs, we have control of, of what's going on. Um, uh, but the, the, the current owners will retain a seat on the board and will give us their advice. Um, for example, the first one we acquired in Malawi, uh, it's called the Chambe Basin Project. Uh, that's been uh, explored by Jogmec, which is the Japanese um, state exploration company. They did 10 years of work there on the project. And our partner, a chap called Hilton Bander, whose company we're acquiring, uh, he was one of the geologists working with them. So he is in, a, is in a great position to understand what exactly there is at this site. Um, so from being a a geologist working on a number of projects, he actually decided he wanted to buy this tenement, the license, the exploration license. Uh, so when it came up for renewal in February this year, um, it was, uh, the renewal was not allowed for the current owners and he stepped in and, and put it in. So he's acquired that license and we're gonna acquire 75% of his company. Um, and he will join the board as our technical director. So that is fantastic. I think sort of as a top line, um, explanation about uh, rare earths. There are typically two, let's call it two deposit types. There's carbonatite, which is a hard rock deposit, which is very common. Um, that requires lots of you know, drilling in rock, blasting, separating the rare earth from the rock. So it's quite a complex, expensive process. And the other type is ionic clay. Um, so in China, which currently controls about 90, 95% of the global market, most of their deposits are ironic clay and this is basically the, the rare earth sits in soil or clay deposits and so drilling holes into clay and soil is very easy um, uh, removing the, the soil the deposits is also easy and it goes through a simple leaching process to take the rare earths out so this is a far quicker cheaper method but traditionally these deposits are a lot smaller than the hard rock uh, deposits so in kenya sorry not in kenya that is a carbonatite sorry in uh, malawi this is an ionic clay deposit. So uh, the expectation would be for not too much money, we'd be able to put together a resource estimate um, and work it up in the next 12 to 24 months to a pre-feasibility study quite cheaply, um, which would then obviously attract the larger investors to come in and support the project to production itself. Um, uh, similarly, we, an we announced last week an acquisition in Uganda. Uh, that's also, we think, an ionic clay deposit. Um, and this lies next door to a very successful Australian listed company called Ionic Clay. Um, the names and the clue, the clues in the name, sorry. Um, and um, we're expecting that we will find similar deposits of rare earths, uh, according to our geologists. So that's it. So look, we're trying to put together a portfolio of, of assets. We're trying to spread the risk um, and not just focus on one project, which I think could be a mistake. Um, learning from Altona's history, having one asset. Um, but 
we're a tiny, tiny little company on Aquis. We have no cash. We're doing a fundraiser at the moment through NR Private Market. And I know you spoke to the CEO, Rich Lloyd, yesterday. They're doing fantastic things for junior miners. You know, when, the, when a broker says they can't raise money for you because you're too small, um, Rich and his team step up. They do all the uh, due diligence, they do all the legal work, and then they open up to their very supportive list of private shareholders. Um, and so that's it. So we're, we've opened a, a fundraise on NR Private Market uh, three days ago two days ago and it's running until the 16th of October with a chance of maybe extending it. So if we can raise about half a million pounds, that would be enough to start putting drills into the ground to find out just what we have at these sites um, to then take it onto a larger fundraise. Right, so through the uh, the situation um, as as we find it, or as I think we find it, you're on the uh, on the Aquis Exchange, which uh, which I believe is uh, Greta Garbo's favourite exchange at the moment, um, yep. so so there is the issue of of of, of that. Um, you're raising half a million pounds, which uh, yep. you could, I suppose, in the current environment, uh, given the boom in the in the mining sector, raise a uh, million, two million. You could almost raise whatever you like. I think, especially with rare earths. I mean, that seems to be the way that the market is. It's a very enthusiastic yep. market, but you're going for half a million. You've got three main projects, um, which all appear to be, uh, you know, in, in a decent position. You know, you've done the DD on them and everything else. Yeah. Uh, and so really, um, with the reboot of Altona, you could come back uh, much better than before. I think, yes, that, that, <laughs> I don't think it could be much worse than we were before. I think um, it, to go and raise two, three million pounds, which would need to complete phase one and two drilling for all three projects, at the price the shares are currently would be disingenuous to our shareholders. Um, the suspended price is nine and a half P. And we're doing this raise at six and a half P, which is a 32% discount. And we're also offering warrants as well. So one warrant for every two shares subscribed for. That is a fantastic deal um, on a mining play that that is 50% there because of the work that's already been done by previous owners on these, these sites. Um, you know, I've worked in the city for 20 years, as you know, we've known each other for probably about 10 or 15 of those. I think it's worth doing it properly. I think get the amount of money you need to do the job. And then if the job looks good, let's go and raise some more money, maybe at 12p or 15p. And the shareholders that come in now can come in again. The investors are coming now, but they'll be rewarded uh, by their support and loyalty. Um, but to go and flood the market now with Altona shares and raise two or three million quid, even if we could find a broker that would do that, I think would be um, wrong. But it, it, so the, the, maybe the strategy would be that you, you raise this initial money on, on Aquis and then uh, further down the line as the, pro, the projects uh, progress, yeah. you think of going maybe to AIM or, or, or uh, taking another, uh, another view? Absolutely, yeah. We're looking at both now. Um, I know obviously AIM listing costs are astronomical uh, standard listing costs are, are cheaper, but of course standard would also come with its own baggage, the fact that you can only raise a certain amount of money every 12 months, um, which is a percentage of your market cap, I believe. Um, so if we did need sort of three or four million pounds in a hurry, we would struggle to get that unless we did it through a debt instrument or something else that will um, compute, you know, not straightforward equity. Um, AIM obviously, you know, you want some money, you just go raise some money, everyone knows that. Um, Aquis, it's it's been fantastic for us. You know, it's um, it hasn't troubled us. We have been suspended for the last few months, so uh, you know, we talk to them regularly. I know another company's just raised two and a half million pounds on on Aquis in the last week, um, which is probably the largest fundraise they've ever done. The new owners um, maybe are doing what they set out to do. So we won't write off Aquis until we have this first tranche of cash in the bank until we know that um, you know, the only way forward would be to move on to another market. Um, every stock market in the UK, as you know, has its own baggage. Um, AIM is fantastic for the bulletin boards and the, the haters and the rampers. Altona has been um, subject to that for many years. Uh, it would be nice to be able to run a company that share price is um, you know, responsive to the news the company puts out. 
if you put out some positive news, fine. If you're delaying in something you promised, then of course you're going to get hit by 10 or 20 percent. But what I've seen so many times for AIM companies is somebody puts a bad remark somewhere and you could lose 50 percent because the herd follows. And I think some companies on AIM have lost out um, on their livelihoods even because of nothing they've done themselves. So maybe standard is a little bit more grown up than that. And Aquis, of course, at the moment, nobody really looks at it, so you're, you're sort of safe, if you know what I mean. But the more attention that Aquis gets, the more liquidity it gets, I'm sure it's the, the same treatment that will happen. But yeah, we all know the small cap game in London, and people can make a lot of money on it if they, um, you know, if they invest at the right time. Um, so yeah, that's that decision, <laughs> long story short, that decision is yet on the table, but we are considering all options because ultimately the company does need to raise um, large amounts of cash because it's going to be mining free. Okay, well, so, uh, in summary, uh, somebody's got a uh, half a million pounds burning a hole in their pocket, they can uh, phone up uh, NR Private Market, uh, or they can phone up me as well, I'll, I'll take the money <laughs> for that purpose. Uh, and uh, what's the time frame in terms of relisting, maybe in, into early sure. Yeah, um, according to Aquis, as soon as we raise some cash, we'll be relisted. Um, and if we get the half a million pounds target we're looking for, that will give us cash for six months. And the, the drilling programs will be three months each, and then we have to um, analyze the content. So within six months, I imagine we, we could be on a different stock market, and we'll be looking to raise more cash. But mainly we will try to get a resource estimate for at least one of the assets that we're doing and the resource estimate is sort of you know the initial stage in showing yes what you say you've got is is what you have and therefore we will put more money into your company because we believe that this is going to be you know um, a successful project um we're also looking to uh, finally just to recruit a couple more board members as well um, because we're, we're fairly light um we're looking for a chairman and an non-exec director, somebody who could um, obviously add their knowledge and experience uh, and help with the decision making on the board. Um, and I think, again, from, from working with many companies over the last 20 years, it's, it's important to have the right mix on the board of mining personnel, city people, maybe some of the legal corporate governance experience, just so that every eventuality that you may face as a listed company is, is covered. Christian Taylor Wilkinson, uh, CEO at Alterna Energy, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Zach. Good speaking.